Okay. <clears throat> Another one. Oh, come on. Amir, actually, you were first. Good job. <laughs> Lurib. Welcome back, Lurib. Rune Gria. Friend. Hello, friend. Oh. Hey, Zelin. And Rolomancer. Oh, what's good? Oh, I wonder if you could do that. Let me try that, actually. No. It couldn't import emote. Hey, Mel. Atsuki. Fight Milk. Spectre. Oh, jeez. Steven. <laughs> it goes so fast, it does indeed. Fuchsia. Yeah, we're going to do another um, another warm-up uh, or study on uh, digital plein air. I think it's a lot of valuable information and a lot of people seem to like it. And um, I don't see anything um, negative with it in that sense. Um, Look at that. Oh, look at that text. What are you doing? What on the fuck? Uh, what? Are you broken? It's like a guessing game, like what direction can you move the... I'm not going to touch it anymore. Uh, Steven, today is landscape again, indeed. Um, the idea here is we're doing uh, digital plein air. So if you want to join us in the study, it's um, the following. Um, you type apostrophe ref. And... Uh, Let's see, just what you can see. All right, you can see that. So you can look around yourself and choose um, your own crop of the location. Uh, you can zoom, scroll out, and you get your own kind of, you can create your own uh, composition. And then you do a study and then you post it. But so the idea is, is, if you want to do my exact point of view, you can take the URL, but you can also get the URL and shift the camera. Unfortunately, we can't travel left and right, forward and backwards in this scene. It's just one spot. But uh, nevertheless, it's, um, um, it's, it's a beautiful colors. And I think there's a lot of interesting things happening um, in terms of reflections. Uh, fish eye camera perspective you can see it in the highlights how the perspective lines are going down to the point because I push the camera back um, the tree little tree obviously or spruce or whatever they're called also follows that uh, perspective line 
So there's there's a lot of small things you can do to help it make it interesting. Um, so I thought, why not? Oh and, yeah, uh, it's a good good thing to study, I believe. And but I think next Monday we will do uh, not plein air. So this will be the last plein air for for the time being. We will do more digital plein airs, uh, but not for a while after this week oh boss thank you very much 20 months 21 months oh jesus that is crazy that is crazy hey somebody threw away a beer bottle yeah i know I was like, oh, but ah, then I remembered, okay, it's Russia. I'm not surprised. Um, anyways, let's get to it. So I think what I want to study today is um, this cool very beautiful connection between the the cyan and the uh, brown orange and the cyan with the blue and the green it has some crazy gradients happening and uh, they look quite nice and i want to um, kind of try to capture that Again, as per usual in these studies, I'm not going to worry too much about being extremely accurate in terms of placement. But I'm going to be looking at um, colors, try to understand that aspect. So there's going to be a lot of strange and wonky proportions in this image but that's okay I, I'm not going to bother too much about it I'm obviously going to try to somewhat stay accurate but I know that there's going to be discrepancies but that's okay I'm, I'm not going to worry too much about it I, 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 I'm going to pay attention to the, the, the palette a lot more than the accuracy of it. Hey, Morphia. So yeah, Rollomancer, the, re the reflection is very interesting. I agree. There is some interest, very interesting things happening with the reflection. Um, so, uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, so round four is announced. Uh, it is now semi-finals in the Unreal Bjornament. Um, there are the selected 12, or no, rather not selected, but self-enabled <laughs> semi-final 12 it's fantastic it's really cool so apostrophe round four if you want to see the final uh, semi-finals and what they have to do uh, this time around I set up a, a construct uh, constriction I guess or a demand to the round topic and that is a minimum of three figures or characters in the scene so you can't just go fully what do what you want but now it's a little bit about uh, upping your game and uh, and uh, making a complicated composition so it's going to be a requirement to be able to make something advanced right so the challenge is going not going to be how many characters can i put in but i need at least three that reads well together 
So that's a really important aspect to remember is not so much about the amount, but the, the ones that are in there have to work together. So that's going to be the challenge uh, to get right. Not so much the count, but the amount, uh, the interaction between them. That's wrong color. And good job everyone who participated so far. Amazing to see. Uh, I'm so proud of all the effort and the uh, evolution of each participant. It's crazy to see just how far each person goes and how hard they work and how it's paying off. Oh, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And uh, I must say, like looking at, for example, let's take a as an example here, Gria. Last year, Unreal Bjornament um, two, you fought. You you didn't get to the semifinals, did you? But yet this year, you are, and you're getting some great comments from the judges, and you're doing some great entries, and we can clearly see. I mean, at least I can see clearly see from last year to this year uh, and the feedback you got and how you've improved technically and uh, you're starting to really flex like compositional muscles and execution wise you're really trying to up your game and, it, and it's visible and, and I think that's really really beautiful hey Pacobra Hey Lurib, I was gonna just gonna gonna mention you, Lurib. Um, but have a great day. Uh, anyways, so what I wanted to come to to the point is that all, all everybody is so working so hard, and I want to point out that um, and that it's it's paying off to work hard. I mean, if we think back at it, about where you all were as a as an artist uh, last year um, and if you think about how many are get actually getting work uh, and and some let's let's point out some highlights since I started streaming and we were started this journey together um, Konma has gotten a job uh, he's working uh, with uh, a big outsourcing studio, art studio, in Germany. Hey, Captain Boss. Um, Lou Rib is ju is gotten hired as a, I think, junior character artist. Um, Zialin is doing commissions. Um, Gria is actually do, get also doing commissions. Permia is freelancing and doing uh, commissions. And uh, at the beginning of all this, it, no one really did that. Everyone just had a a pen and a passion, <laughs> right? But now all of a sudden, more and more people are getting hired and getting getting to fulfill their jobs. Sayart, he started freelancing and I guess getting really, really busy because he's not around anymore. Who else got a job doing what they do? I think uh, Kuru is freelancing. And it's this this like one after the other just 
getting jobs and getting to the point where they can actually get hired and starting chasing that dream and it's amazing and it's beautiful to see and it makes me so happy and so proud to see how how hard work definitely is paying off Pacobra, cheers. And Bose, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I am not, I wasn't counting you, uh, Bose, because you were already working professionally, right? You, but you are not in the field you want to do, but you are still working. So I, I wasn't counting you, but definitely Bose also doing commissions, sci fi commissions, doing robots. I guess that's the congr congratulations to you, I guess, because that's a really good um, effort as well a small step towards chasing that dream. And it's, I, I, again, I, I just love how that, how far we all are coming and going and, and it's all down to, uh, you know, gritting your teeth fighting through the struggle and, and not giving up with this whole art thing, right? Easily, you could easily be disheartened and, and give up because you're not seeing instant res solution, right? But that's what I've said many times before as well, is, is not, art takes a long time to get really good at where people want to pay you uh, for, for, your, for your service. And it's about harnessing that skill set is about pushing that skills to a point where it's actually starting to be attractive and it's art actually you're actually so um advanced or you've pushed ahead so far that you are starting to shine through you are starting to um navigate the landscape more or rather than just walking around and, and, and like following the map right like trying to learn what you, you what you need to do now you're actually starting to to put yourself out there and, and a sort of vision of yourself and that takes a quite a long time it's not easy to do and it's a lot of work and you got to be very perceptive about it but the one thing that you should remember uh, which i always remember that the hard work is about laying a solid foundation that you will build for years on top of there's always shortcuts to take you can always get better faster but that's not necessarily a solid foundation you just can get ahead fast and and for me that's one of them as i see it is like uh, flash in a pan uh, gum roads like really fast really vapid gum roads that will teach you how to draw one drawing but it doesn't break, give you a solid foundation to to move ahead with and and for me a lot of the hard work that we do and the, and the studies and implementation of knowledge and so on is just a way to secure a future. And it's, it's beautiful to see that one after the other is, is actually fulfilling that and it's actually just, hey, I just got hired. Hey, I just got this. Oh, my first commission. It's like, yes. Perfect. That's what I love to hear. I love to see. And I remember myself that feeling of getting a commission and how exciting it is and how accomplished it makes you feel. It's a fantastic feeling. And it, it spurs you on, right? It's what, what makes you want to learn even more. And, and it's important also to take, uh, to acknowledge that and, uh, and uh, give yourself a pat on the shoulder and, uh, and realize, uh, I think the biggest is, uh, 
is to realize the accomplishment in that action for those who finally can take the step to get a client and make some money. It's not so much about, oh, I'm getting bad pay or oh, I wish I could get more money. But you that that as well, of course, you know, starting out, you're never going to have top top dollars, as they say. Uh, but you should take into account and, and, and acknowledge and, and applaud yourself that you've gotten to that point now where you're actually people want to want to give you money for something you create for them and that is not something to take lightly and not to be jaded about because like oh yeah it's my first job but you know like it's for some random person and so on don't sell yourself short in that sense it is a massive big step and and take a good 10 minutes and and cherish the fact and 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 and, and uh, love yourself a little bit because it's important because you need that acknowledgement as well that it's it's that you've taken now the first step into the into the future that ideally that could have you give you a life that's different Cobra brushwork it is very important it it depends on style of course as well but my style is very painterly and it's very uh, very much uh, how you laid how I lay down the marks will dictate the painting the idea is in a painterly style is that um, the marks you you make because they are few in between, they have more importance. And the less time you spend going over them over and over, the more expression you get in these marks, right? It's like the whole, there is this kind of theory, I guess, about that, the, the intent of a mark. That you need to practice having a reason to make a mark right the more time you go over that mark the l the less of expression you get and the more watered down the expression becomes and it's a waste of time so the whole idea is is like less is more right and you have to practice making those marks but that is in an expressive painting style um, more so than you know like let's say there's these uh, high high detail renders which where you you like for example for riot they don't want to see any brush marks in their uh, illustrations they should all be one mass right they don't want uh, placed marks brush marks it's not their style so if you work for them you gotta work out all the expression in that sense they have to be treated loosely but defined and no like suggestive marks <laughs> gandalf with my face that would be horrible Pacobra, horizontal brush mark, you could, absolutely, you would get a different intent with the uh, marks then. then you would need to follow or you need to have a reason why it's making it horizontal, unless you just describe the thing you're painting and then you're doing it wrong.
Steven. That's cool. That's good. And again, I'm, I'm, I want to point out that styles are very different from person to person. And you need to practice your own style in that sense of um, what feels natural, what, let's say, um, points of inspiration do you have in terms of other, other artists or look and feel of a painting that you love looking at and you would like to paint like. I think that's really important to understand uh, as an artist is where are you going in terms of style. And uh, I've talked about this before uh, to make um, selection of images of other people's art in the style of where you want to go, you know, like a roadmap. And it's a really important thing. You can you can learn a lot from doing that. And uh, I can uh, reiterate the, the idea again. It's about finding other paintings or other drawings or whatever it is, right, that speaks to you, that inspires you. And when you look at them, you are amazed and you want to you wanna know how to do that, right? So the idea is that you find other pieces of art and you're very selective with the ones you pick, right? They have to be, let's say, make a top three or five, five paintings or five pieces of art that you absolutely inspire you, that, that would, you wouldn't mind at all going towards that direction. And by making that selection alone, you can start understanding of what your pedigree is or, or a sense of like what you liked looking at and who you are as an artist and and what what tickles your fancy i know i know the styles i would pick but i'm quite sure also that the ones i would pick wouldn't be the same that you would pick um, and that itself dictates who you are as an artist and also currently where where your style is going and style is also nothing you can copy or learn uh, or you shouldn't rather what's important is that you uh, evolve yourself with a clear understanding of where you've gone and where you're going and a lot of that is is knowing your process thinking about the steps you're taking when you're painting limiting or adjusting your trajectory so that you're painting the way you you would like the out come to look like right so for example i love painterly marks brush marks and i've I'll, i've orientated my process around the process of laying down marks building a painting up very traditional means in an, in terms of of painting style i don't do soft brush i don't even touch it more or less Because I know that's not the direction I want to go, you know. And I, so I'm not sweating about it. I, I don't, I don't want to do digital ink that much. Because that's not really a look that I enjoy painting. I can do it for clients. But it's not like if I sit down and paint something in the middle of, like in, a, in an evening with a glass of wine, it's not going to be digital ink or emulating digital ink. Well, then that's fine. That's me, you know. But I also am aware of that. And I also know my sources of inspiration and what I've looked at over the years to help me, push me in the right direction and where I want to go. And that's really important to understand. So it's almost like you make a selection of images as a declaration of who you are, right? And then you look at those images and go, oh, yeah. And one interesting thing to do is, is for example, if you have an art station account, is that when you have favorited images and added them to a collection and you look at the collection and you go, oh, I, I really like these kind of things. And it's really eye-opening. Like I, I can show you mine, for example. <laughs> I'll show you mine if you show me yours. Um, 
to where do you have collections? Mm. How? Oh, here, collections. Uh, if I want to join oil painting, yeah, sometimes I do, but I can't do it with kids around. Hey, Miguel, how's it going? So looking at my, my selection from ArtStation, you can clearly see a trend, right? Character-centric, very painterly and evocative marks. Color is a huge part of what I like and strong shapes. You can see that clearly. <laughs> like looking at my my selection on ArtStation. And you can also then look at my art and go, oh yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's what I like and that's what I'm going for. And it's very interesting to see it. And I'm quite sure that a lot of people have different selections of what they like. Uh, Pacobra, those are not just liked pictures, but they are um, saved. You can save uh, images to selection or to um, collection. Collection. So you can have a collection though, which you name like characters or or uh, environments or whatever you want. You can have as many collections as you want, and you can favorite images on ArtStation and put them in these collections. Uh, I just have them in one massive. Uh, piece of uh, collection where they're all there um, for archiving for me to be able to go back to an interesting piece I saw or to share it with an artist or to point it out to a student or you no know, just you know for uh, archiving purposes but it's also really useful to see what I like and it's also a good reminder like oh yeah I need to focus on better shapes it's like, okay, enough with this, right? <laughs> but it's really, really useful. It's really, really good and important to do. To know not only what you prefer, but where you're going. If, you're, if you don't push yourself in the right direction, you might waste time on something that might not be fruitful for you. And it's not some sort of dire uh, words of warning here, like, don't waste time, you're going to die tomorrow. <laughs> but more or less, if you're focused on what you like, you're not going to waste time doing something else. And you're going to get faster gratification. You're going to get where you need to go at a faster pace, even though getting to where you want to go takes a lot of time. Like I told Zialim uh, last year, it's going to take a year. You have a, about a year left until you start uh, getting hired. I could kind of see that uh, where where Zialim was in his artistic development, right? And here we are, more or less a year later, and Zialim is starting to get uh, work. But it's really important to, like I said, I feel like I'm repeating it myself, but understand where you're going. It'll make a massive difference. Know yourself. Know your process. Know where you where you want to take your process, where, where you want to take your style. And what makes you happy. In what genre do you sit when you're in absolute artistic bliss? <laughs> Is it line work, ink, painter style, modeling? about getting hired and where to get jobs from it's about exposure 
making good stuff that stands out will always get you exposure. And if you want to just attack on all platforms, market yourself. Good work gets attention. Um, Rooney, where you are, it's a little bit hard to know, uh, Idina, you're a little bit new, but uh, judging on, uh, on um, your last Unreal Bjorn Ahmed 3 piece, you definitely could do, get uh, paid to do work. I mean, I, I wouldn't say you're like top tier uh, artist. I mean, there's not a lot of artists who are, but you're definitely on the way. There is some awkwardness still in your art based on what I've seen, but that's normal. Everyone has that struggle. Everyone has to deal with these awkwardness of like sloppy technique or, or inaccurate light and, you know, these standard issues that all artists have and the longer you do it the less they stand out but everyone has them um, so that's not something that you should take like a detriment but uh, the more you hone your skills the more you practice the more you attempt your portfolio like unreal Bjornament is where you you knuckle down on one painting you you, you prepare it to the best of your abilities you try to really make it the foundation as strong as possible and then you finish it and every time you do that and every time you really really try to up your game and then do a post-mortem where you analyze what you've done and and try to limit the mistakes for the next time you're gonna exponentially grow and make better and better art and a lot of these hard push uh, paintings that you do when you approach that kind of uh, when you approach art that way, they will sit in your portfolio for a long time because the 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 foundation is so strong in them. Right, so this is my study. Um, I focused really a lot on the colors and I didn't care too much about uh, getting it just right. Uh, I also talked a lot about other things and didn't really spend a lot of time on painting. But really, really good fun. Really lovely colors in this scene. So if you want to do them, just uh, apostrophe ref and you'll get uh, a link to Google Maps and you can stand here next to me <laughs> and paint um, the view. Um, so let's find someone to raid, pass the gauntlet onto and uh, let's see i think i think it's time to go into um, art category Who should we raid? That uh, that looks kind of interesting. <laughs> Ass. Oh. Twitch art. What are you doing? Hmm. 
Hmm. Someone is painting Baby Yoda. It's pretty cool. Maybe. <laughs> sad girl painting sad painting. Someone's looking at the Instagram. Where's the art people? Where's the non titsunas manga? That looks pretty cool. Even though it is a little bit titsunas, but let's go. Let's raid this random person. All right, so we're gonna raid this random artist. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Have a good one, everyone. See you tomorrow morning where I'm gonna draw your topic. Hopefully you have a great day, have a great night's sleep. See you tomorrow. And I'm gonna do the outro, then take you to the raid. Tits and ass. <laughs> no, but anyways, have a good one. Toodles.